Good afternoon, everyone. It's Weather United, and I am so glad to present you all my winter forecast. A few of you in the comments section have been asking me over the last month, "Is are you going to do a winter forecast? When are you going to do one? Well, here it is, and I'm excited to present this all to you. If you are new to the YouTube channel and you like the detailed weather updates, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. So our first pit stop is our January, February, and March temperature anomaly forecast. As always, all of these maps that you see are hand-created by me. So that I completely um, took the time and made this. So hopefully you all really like it a lot. So my forecast here does call for above average temperatures in the desert southwest, including for the deep south, and the southeastern seaboard, including for the northeast, with leaning above average chances for those temperatures that are going to like possibly be above average versus if you're in the northern tier of the United States, you're leaning below to likely below average as far as those temperature anomalies go. And in the gray area, there is an equal chance for these temperatures to either being above average or below average. There's really not any leaning towards or what. It's just kind of monkey in the middle kind of deal. So now, Taking a look at our precipitation forecast for January through March, in the heart of winter, we can see above average chances of rainfall or snowfall for the Pacific Northwest, including for the um, Great Lakes, where you have a 33% leaning above average chance there, versus in the Deep South, including for the Desert Southwest and the Southeast, you're leaning below to likely below average. I mean, Southern Texas, you have a 60 to 70% chance that you could have a below average winter with rainfall or snowfall. So this could be really unfortunate with the exacerbating drought situation that's going on in Texas and Oklahoma. So probably not much relief this winter, unfortunately, and equal chances there in the gray colors. So now, what about my winter impact forecast? Everybody's excited for this, and I'm glad you all are. So what is it looking like for your area specifically? So of course, I have viewers that watch me from the Pacific Northwest, from the Desert Southwest, including for the Eastern, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast, such as New England. So what is it looking like for your area specifically? Well, of course, for my area, we're looking at damp conditions. So that means maybe a slim chance for above average rainfall. It's going to be damp otherwise. We're not looking at a very dry winter. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we had a really bad January, February, and March of last or of this year. So hopefully this winter will be a whole lot different. Very wet conditions across the Pacific Northwest, including for Oregon and Washington. Mountain snows for the higher elevations. But if you go across the northern tier of the United States, we're looking at ground blizzard conditions. Maybe some heavy snow that will likely induce those blizzard conditions. But it's going to be likely some very cold Arctic air and some gusty blustery winds that will lead to ground blizzard conditions. So that's what this all is here. Um, ECS means um, extreme cold shots on top of blizzards. Really, really wild winter on the way for you all that live up there. For the Midwest, like the Ozarks, some severe weather is possible in the mixed bag of uh, warm and dry conditions, maybe some mild and dry conditions also, including for some cold weather. And then if you're in the New England area, you're looking at some nor'easters, blizzard conditions, lake effect snows, which stands for LES, if you were wondering about that. And then, of course... For Florida, for Southern Georgia, for Southern portion of South Carolina, you have dry conditions that are fairly likely. It's really unfortunate. It happens every winter. It seems like it gets drier for the Florida panhandle. But hey, you had Hurricane Ian. That brought a lot of beneficial rainfall. I feel bad for the damage though, but at least you got some rainfall out of that. But now it's going to get really dry, unfortunately for that area. Chilly and wet conditions over uh, Virginia, including for North Carolina, 
and uh, also for Tennessee, you're looking at some cold and wet conditions there too. So why is this going to be a crazy winter? You may all be asking. Well, we can blame it on the Christ girl, which is La Nina in Spanish. And so all this blue water here is uh, indicating that uh, sea surface temperatures are anywhere between about a half a degree and colder. And some of these anomalies here are on the order of negative one to negative two degrees Celsius. The darker blues there, negative three Celsius so this is not when you hear negative three that does not mean it's freezing it just means these are departures from normal so when I say three degrees Celsius below average it's negative three right and then you got some anomalies here in the Atlantic that are above average so that's why we are gonna have this kind of winter in place because of this La Nina and also you got to consider the PNA the EPO and the AO and the NAO which are all different teleconnections that do impact the jet stream and the polar vortex which right now the polar vortex is very wild it's weak and it's very unstable so we just never know with what it's going to look like until we have a better established polar vortex which doesn't seem to happen this year so our typical la nina pattern does indicate this variable polar jet stream that's how the polar vortex is acting right now we're seeing this jet stream either dive very far south or go very far north and that's going to bring in the cold arctic air so this seems to match up really well for the northern tier for canada for british columbia for portions of alaska um, well below average temperatures are likely and that's because of this polar jet that you see that dives down wetter conditions over the Pacific Northwest including for Northern California but again it could favor drier than normal conditions that's what the equal chances there are for because we might see this jet stream dip a little further south than what we thought or it may go a little further north than what we predicted and so uh, this is kind of a roll of the dice in here in Central and Southern California but likely Southeastern California drier conditions you get the big story la nina is here the christ girl is um, showing her muscles it's strong and it's going to remain that way through the winter time so um going on to past analogs and why i made my forecast the way i did here is when we look back at 1996 1999 2000 2006 8 11 18 21 and 22 um, this is an average of those three months of those years and so uh during those years between january through february uh yeah january through march uh we had below average slightly temperatures in northern california including for the pacific northwest including for the northern tier of the united states hence is why i have you all in the blue like you see here so if we go back that kind of matches really well with what this forecast pretty much illustrates not exactly but that's why we have the probabilities however for the deep south there's not above average here but this again is an overall average analog uh, database and that's that would only be about um a, a quarter of a degree above average during those years which is significant doesn't seem like a lot but a quarter of a degree in a three-month average is substantial so now precipitation is it how are were those years during past la nina events well between january and march uh, from 1996 all the way through 2022 of this year we can see that the pacific northwest had above average rainfall or snowfall also above average in indiana southern portion there of illinois into missouri into the northern new england area including the great lakes while well below average average a uh, rainfall or snowfall persisted across the southeast the deep south and the desert southwest especially look at that for texas that is substantial i mean you're at an inch below average with rainfall uh roughly an inch this is in millimeters um i don't know why they use millimeters but they should use literally the american units but either way you put it well below average um rainfall is certainly a likely sure bet there for the deep south and you can see the analogs here i'm showing real signs to you all okay so the geopotential height um this is kind of the driver here so during such of these years from 1996 to 2022 between again january through march there was increased ridging down here across the deep south with more persistent low pressure regions 
regions in the Pacific Northwest, including for Western and Northern Canada, up across Alaska. This forms what we call a Rosby wave pattern where the jet stream gets very wavy and the ridges, um, while um, on average here, are stronger than normal, but the pattern can change very quickly with increased ridging likely in the North Pacific. With increased ridging, what we call a buckled up high over the northeastern New England, which helps um, keep your temperatures at or above average during the winter months, which is why I have that in my forecast. All right, that's going to cut it to the chase for this winter forecast 2022, everyone. I really, really hope you enjoyed the video so much. I put a lot of time into this, so hopefully you please share this with your family and friends. I'm looking into doing more of these. It just takes a whole lot of time. It takes a lot of thinking of what I'm going to put and looking at the analogs. It's more time consuming than actually me presenting it to you, but it's worth it. Um, I'm going to listen to you guys. If you guys have um, anything you want me to do for the channel as far as these outlooks, I'm thinking about making a snowfall forecast for the season. Maybe this year. I don't have the resources just yet for that, but I'll make sure I do something special for you all um, for next season. We always have next year, folks. Um, I'll be doing this for a living. So if you guys did like the content, though, in today's video, share, like, and subscribe. And I'll be back with you more tomorrow with more awesome weather content headed your way. Thanks for watching.